Hello again, Risk Community. Welcome to another video tutorial to help you get started and make the best of service now. My name is Eric Ferron in Santa Clara, California, and my guest today is Donna Johnson, Advisory Solution Architect for GRC at ServiceNow. Donna has been on the Get Started show before, taking us through the pre-implementation and implementation steps for policy and compliance. Good afternoon, Donna, and welcome back. Hi, Eric. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Donna is going to help us get started with vendor risk management through a product demo. That's right, Eric. Uh, what we find when we meet with a lot of businesses is that they have an obligation to assess vendors that could impact their risk, their supply chain, availability, or even uh, public relations, if you will. So as they have to go through and assess these vendors, we find that they need a way to prioritize which ones they do first, and then from there, how they proactively take steps to get remediation efforts in order. So ServiceNow has uh, capabilities within the product in the vendor risk management solution that help our business do risk assessments of vendors more efficiently. So today I'll take you through a little demo on how to get started with the product. Excellent. And this is also very timely because we just published another episode of the Get Started series with uh, Jorge Garcia, who is technical product manager. And that episode focused specifically on IT vendor risk. The two episodes really complement each other nicely. So I really recommend our audience that you watch both. And of course, there will be a link to that other episode in the description below this, uh, this video. All right, Donna, let's get started then. The floor is yours. So there are six steps to think about it before you implement vendor risk management. One, my vendor portfolio, gathering the list of your vendors and thinking about how you're going to import them into the product. Then we think about vendor tiering. This is an internal process to your organization where your internal stakeholders are going to review and assess a vendor before you ever send an assessment to that vendor. It could be things like security questionnaires internally. How important is this vendor to the business? Do we have an MSA on file or an NDA, et cetera? So these are called tiering assessment. So we'll get into assessment management and what that's made up of. And then we'll talk about your vendor portal and what vendors see when they log into their portal. We'll look at issues and remediation when we view the vendor's response. And then we'll just touch lightly on areas where we can integrate with GRC. And with that, I'll jump over into the demo. So we're in the ServiceNow platform and I'm logged in at the vendor risk dashboard. So I can see things like my vendors with critical risk rating. I can see vendors ranked by tier. Today, we're just gonna use Work Faster as an example of a vendor. So if I take a look at this vendor, I can see a lot of information about them. I can see their names, their website, industry, uh, what type of vendor they are, what service they're providing. Here's where we integrate with um, API with BitSite. And then I can see the vendor tier. So this vendor is rated critical. And then I can see that I have vendor manager names listed here, as well as business owners. In a moment, I'm gonna show you how you could import you know, from an Excel spreadsheet. But the kind of data you'll populate is the name of the vendor, the address, et cetera. So this will all be captured inside the vendor record. I can also see the profile, their footprint, and important information as it relates to revenue, availability, et cetera. I even have a place to add their logo here. All my vendor contacts are down below, and I can actually specify who's a primary. So Alex is a primary as an example where I see true. I can see any tiering assessments and the state they're in. So I can sort here and see what state they're in. I can set assessments up to go to the vendor on a regular frequency and schedule this. This is great if you have a critical vendor and you want to assess them multiple times per year. Any assessments that are outstanding uh, by the vendor here, the different rating that they've received and the state they're in. When I generate a finding or an issue, those will be tracked here. Any tasks I've assigned will be here. And that GRC integration, if I've got risks I wanna to associate to the vendor, they'll show up here, as well as any controls from the policy and compliance module. So let's talk about your vendor portfolio. I've gone to all vendors and I can see my vendors listed here and I can sort in a different order. So if I want to import from a spreadsheet, all I have to do is click on name 
and then import. And the solution will give me an option to actually create the Excel template that I can populate for the import. So when I download that, so I have one already here, I'll just open up. And what's really nice about this, they give you some details on how to populate this. And then all of the required fields are there for you to fill out and import this. So once I've done that, I can just choose the file and upload. So I'll just upload one that I already have done. I've imported this and I can click on complete import. And it might tell me I have an error. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that for this demo. I just wanted you to see that there is a way to import this. So a new vendor risk assessment has been created, created based on vendor uh, tier update. So here's one uh, that I imported. This record, Donna Johnson. So this is what I brought in. I put all the contact information, very simplistic. Let's actually talk about the workflow of performing an assessment. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is, first of all, let's change this vendor tier to low, just for fun. And then let me show you how you can go through the tiering process. The tiering process is an internal process. And the way you would create tiering assessment, you would come down here in the vendor record to tiering assessments and say new. And then I'm gonna give it who's it assigned to. And then notice the vendor tier is blank right now. It says none. Tiering assessors, I'll just add myself to make this easy. And then you can enforce an SLA here by how many days event, the assessment can be with the internal business unit. Any notes and comments you wanna add as well. So let me hit submit. Now let's see. So let's see what tiering number this is. It's number 2035. So I create a little bookmark over here. So here it is, it's this Q2 2019. So I can go in here and take a look at this. Um, let's go ahead and add the actual tiering assessment here. So I have one called basic. And now that I've attached basic, let me um, submit the assessment. Under this assessment instances, there'll be this instance of the assessment right here. I can go in here. I can actually click the button that says take assessment. So I'm gonna answer this in a way that gets me a critical rating by answering the questions in a certain manner here. Now remember, we before we had done this, it, the vendor tier was set to none. So as I pick these answers, you'll see how that changes in a moment here. So let's take a look. Let's view the user's responses here. And you can see how they've answered. My risk uh, tier is now set to critical. Do you see this here? And then also under the tiering assessment, I can come in here and take a look at this. I can see that it's set to critical. It's in a tiering assignment. Let's take a look at this. I can view the user's responses right here. And so now we know that they're set as critical. Now there's a couple of things we can do. We can set a business rule up that says, if this is, uh, if the tiering is automatically set to critical, we can create a business rule that will send out to the vendor based on how they answered the tiering. And I can see that here, I have a bookmark here, vendor tier based submission rules. So if the vendor is tiered as critical, let's take a look at what this rule does. It says if the vendor assessment is critical, automatically submit it to the vendor. And all this is saying is if I answer the tiering assessment, and it reflects critical, automatically send a critical type assessment. So that could be like the SIG full versus a SIG light. Let's talk a little bit about what makes up the tiering assessment. So here I've got my basic uh, tiering assessment and you can see it's made up of um, 
three areas, nature of relationship with the vendor, interactions and impact. If I wanna see what this looks like in designer, I can click edit in designer. And what I like about this, this is the name of my tiering assessment. There's different drag and drop type capabilities in ServiceNow for low code, no code, the ability to build a form. And behind all of these questions is a risk score. So I'll show you that in just a moment. So here I am back at the uh, basic vendors. And you can see each section gets a, a total weight and total metrics related to how each of these questions are answered. So as I expand this, you're gonna see within this domain set, there's different scores for each questions, and all of this can be uh, configured to suit your questionnaire. Next, let's talk about what goes into an assessment. So once you've tiered the vendor as critical, you're gonna to wanna to next send an assessment out to them, either with the automatic submission rules, or I can come in here and say new, assessment and this has its workflow also so I can decide if it's repeating and then I can pick the template I want to use so let's just use the quality assessment or the security assessment critical risk I can make grace the owner I can say that this can be triggered by the vendor tier, which would automatically send it out. Um, it's currently in a draft state. Now we leave the risk rating uh, for you to set. We don't automatically change this because each organization is gonna have a different process for how they review the tiering and what how risky they feel it is to the business. I can add people to a watch list as well. I can put this on a schedule as well so i'm going to hit submit and then i still have to go in as grace and actually submit it to the vendor so let me find that here it's right here so now grace she's just making sure everything's in order so here's the part where what is going to be sent to the vendor under the questionnaire they're going to get two questionnaires a sig full and a sample questionnaire there's also going to be a request to upload evidence in the form of documents. So there'll be a SOC 2 report, ask for, and a SOC 1. So if this all looks good to Grace, she can go ahead and submit it to the vendor. So I hopped on over to a different browser. I'm logged in as Alex Newsom. Now Alex as a primary can do a few things. He can manage a team of assessors and invite people to come and help him complete an assessment. He can also, as a primary, submit the assessments back after they've been reviewed. Alex can come over here and see all the assessments that he has. So this one, security assessment, critical risk assessment. It's due by 10 4 2019. So Alex can come in and start completing this or invite others to start completing this. So I can see I have four requests. I have a sample survey here. So I can answer these questions. Here's a mandatory one, dependent question mandatory. Yes, no, not applicable. So as I go through these, you can configure these to force you to add attachments or have dependency questions. Let's head on over to the SIG light. So here's a SIG full. And as you can see, I could go in a tree sort of format here. I can jump around. And this is where it gets great to say uh, to your organization, if you invite them to answer the survey, tell them which sections they're responsible for. Also, if you have the 2017 SIG full, you can do an import here. And when that's all done, it can be saved and submitted by Alex. Now, a couple other things Alex can see here. He can see any issues you've assigned to him and any tasks as well. So I've jumped up back over into the platform. I want to see the responses for Work Faster and how those were answered. So I've come into the record and the assessment record here, and I can click on this View Users Responses right here. Now, if I want to see uh, the Work Faster responses to the actual assessment, let's go back into Work Faster. under assessments. 
I'm gonna find one that I know I can use in the demo here. So I'm gonna pick on this one where it says finalizing with the vendor. I'm gonna click on quality assessment. And you can see that I've gone through draft, submitted to vendor, responses received, generating observations, finalizing. Down here, I have what questionnaires were sent to them and then what document request. So I can look at all these things. I can see here that the, the shared assessment, the SIG light, it's 58% complete, and I can click view responses right here. And I'm looking now at the SIG light and their answers. I can scroll through and go to the particular section I wanna see. I can also uh, mark things for follow-up. So if I'm running to a meeting and I don't want to lose my train of thought, I can do that. Then when I come back, I can say, just show me the follow-up. Now, if I want to create an issue, I just say, include this question. So up here is create an issue for Alex. And once I do that, I'll get a little uh, notification here that that's been created. So a lot of cool things you can do here and you can be optimizing the resources you have versus going back and forth in Excel. You've got all this right here at your fingertips. So let's talk about what makes up a assessment. Um, an assessment can have a questionnaire. So here I've got the SIG full questionnaire. It can also have a request for documents. So let's take a look at how to package this all up. So when I want to um, send out an assessment to somebody, I could do a new, but let's look at a quality assessment right here. So what makes up this quality assessment? It is made up of questions and document requests for ISO 9001 here. But here I've said, hey, I wanna have two surveys go out and I want two requests for document templates. And this is the container that holds everything you're gonna be asking of the vendor. So let's talk about how you can keep track of all these things. You can start to see all my open issues here. These would be open issues that are you're dealing with the vendor and keeping track of them. So there's an organized way to track all of that work. And then any tasks that the vendor is working on as well. And then for GRC integration, remember this is where we showed you the controls and the risks associated with the vendor. So what should you do right now uh, if you wanna implement? I'd recommend first gathering all of your vendor portfolios so that you'll be ready to import those into the vendor risk module through Excel. Now, if you have a solution such as a human resource solution, if they have an API that we can integrate with, we can definitely connect to that. And we do this uh, quite often with many customers. I highly recommend you look for a certified uh, GRC partner who specializes in GRC. They've been trained and certified to help you with our very specific use cases here, or you can use uh, ServiceNow Professional Services. I also recommend that you go through the VRM training. There's some free e-learning and a two-day course. So whether you plan to use Certified Partner or not, I still think it's a great idea to go through the training. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you for this, Donna, and thank you all for listening. And three quick reminders before we close off. The slides, of course, will be available in PDF format in the community forum. Donna and other ServiceNow specialists are waiting for your questions in the GRC community forum. And of course, don't miss the IT vendor risk episode with Jorge Garcia. Until next time, goodbye.